the world is changing very quickly, and one of the big things we need to look forward to, or not look forward to really, is, is, is that the world is getting faster and faster. And because of competition regulations, and because of the fact that it's illegal to form cartels, if your competitor goes faster, you have to go faster to catch up. And so he sees you catching up, so you go, he goes faster still. And we're now already in a situation where everybody's going hell for leather around this uh, you know, pursuit track and the Olympics and stuff. Uh, everybody's going as fast as they can. We're all using every ounce of energy, uh, every tool we can get, 24-7 working. And the other guy is as well. So we've still got 50% market share. So nobody's moved on, but everybody's working like the package. You know? And so why have we got this for? Why, why didn't we do something about this? Why didn't we see it coming? Because it's very difficult now to unwind it. If you slow down, the competition will steal your market. You can't slow down. So we're con constrained now to this world where everybody has to work every hour God sends with every uh, ounce of ingenuity and every new tool. Surely we can work out some way of going back to a more sensible quality of life balance with our work that day. Uh, you know, maybe that's something you should be looking at in terms of trade unions power uh, in, in, in the future. We need, we need to get back to balancing work and leisure and some, some quality of life as well as just earning cash because all that happens when you earn more cash is the prices go up and you don't actually move forwards. So it doesn't get us anywhere. Population churn is something we can't really do very much about. We're sort of sitting and watching this as observers and we're seeing a lot of people moving into the UK because they're coming from third countries and see the UK is a good place to be. Actually, a lot of people who have been here for a generation or two and now thinking, well, actually, India doesn't look so bad these days, and China's looking a lot better. They're moving up in the, re in the world, so a lot of our Indians and Chinese are going back home, or to places that their parents called them, where their grandparents called them, because they can get a better quality of life for their kids by moving back to where their ancestors came from. So we're seeing a new trend, which is remigration, and that's very quickly becoming entrenched. A lot of the Polish plumbers came over here and having uh, you know, wiped out a lot of British plumbing jobs and all of them are now going back to Poland because the wage rates there are quite high and the pound's been falling and stuff, so they can do quite well by going back to Poland. And we're seeing re-migration as a major trend. But the UK is still attractive for other people from even poorer countries, so we've still got people moving in. Now, one of the trends which worries me enormously is that you know, my daughter, who's 14, she's going to be graduating from university in seven or eight years' time. And when she comes onto the world stage as a potential worker, she's going to look around and think, well, should I stay in the UK? Because uh, there's going to be a lot of retired people taking enormous amounts of pensions out of the system, and they haven't put enough money into those pensions. So there's going to be a big pensions fund gap. Therefore, tax rates will have to rise, and the tax uh, um, handouts we're about to get over the next week or two will have to be repaid. So my daughter's going to have to pay quite high taxes if she stays in the UK. But she's going to a good school, she's going to get a good education, I hope. And she'll look around the world and think, well, should I stay in the UK and pay 50, 60% taxes? Or should I clear off to uh, Brazil or India or China with you know, a vibrant new economy and do much better for myself and raise my family there? So we'll see a brain drain, I think, as well. And we could end up, if we're not careful, with the UK becoming a retirement home, where the only people staying here are those people that are retired. Uh, have not put enough money in the pensions fund and being subsidized by the, by the taxpayers. And those people who are young and have to work, but they haven't got enough skills for any other country to want to employ them. So we could become a nation full of people who can't get employed elsewhere or have already retired. And the people with wealth, those people with good education studies, will have cleared off overseas. Now, I hope it doesn't happen. But that's a real possibility if we carry on going the way we're going. Intergenerational conflict is certainly one of the things that would result if we do go down that road. If we end up with the UK being, being a country with an awful lot of old people clogging up the streets, uh, driving at 29.9 you know, miles per hour in their Volvos with flat capsule and stuff, uh, and the young people are resentful because the old people hold all the political power and keep voting them for themselves more pensions, which have to be picked up costs of from the very few people in work, that would be a very nightmarish economy for the UK. And it's something we need to be very wary of and make sure we don't do that. If our able young emigrate, the UK will be in a very, very um, uh, poor position. So we need to be very careful about retirement on the UK. 